Jim, thank you so much for filling in and playing organ for us today. It's wonderful having you. If you please rise for an order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bonded to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so we may delight in your will. And walk in your ways to your glory and your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace. 
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and share and are satisfied. Fill us and this world and all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'd like to invite the boys and girls to come on up. Maybe you by the baptismal font. Feel the water? Okay, yeah, but you can feel the water if you want. Oh, that's, that's all right. All right, come over here so people can see you. We need to be back on camera. You guys are like famous, you know that. Everyone wants to see you. Here, we'll sit down. 
Charlie said I can walk outside the tape and people won't care, but if they don't see you guys, they're going to be upset, okay? So you guys, how was, how was camp? Nora, you went to camp already, right, correct? Yes, I went to Norfolk. Okay, and which, what camp did you do? I did the um, horse one, I forget. Yeah. Uh, horse Junior. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Then you, you got to ride, I assume? Yes, for three days. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Did, did you have to do, like, take care of them, do the hooves and everything? or? Yes, we had to brush them, pick their hooves. Oh, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a fun camp. All right, but that, that's cool. That's really neat. And and then how was camp? Great. Yeah. And what was it like in eighteen hundreds? It was fun. Yeah. Did you have like? Did you have to give your phone and everything? I mean, what did you have to do? Oh my gosh. And then what did you cook? Did you cook cheeseburgers? We had burgers. You did have burgers and hot dogs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what about chicken nuggets? Oh jeez. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. But no, that's really cool. That's really neat. So you guys had fun at camp. What was your favorite part about the entire thing? Swimming. Swimming? And they had a, do they have a pool or were you in, yeah. in a pool? That's really cool. And what was your favorite? Riding the horse. Riding the horse. His name was Taz. Taz? Oh, yes. did the, did it spin a lot or anything? No. Okay, good, good, good. Well, that's neat. So you guys got to have an entire time of, of camp. And so why, why do you think that we go to, to Lutheran camp? Why do we go to camps in the summertime? Why would you go to church camp? Yeah? Um, because so we can learn more. So you can learn more, yeah, about God, about, about different things. Yeah, why else? Well, the reason I went to this camp was, one, I wanted to ride horses, and two, we were going to be riding on the Battle of Gettysburg, the battlefield. Oh, you got to... That is really neat that you got to ride a horse on the battlefield. That is really, really neat. Yeah. And so you guys get to do new experiences. Did you guys get to meet new friends at all? Yeah. So you get to meet new friends, and then you get to learn more about God. And so what I love about camp, I've never went to camp when I was a kid, but what I like about camp the most is that you get to make those new relationships. And so do you guys, have you guys talked to anyone from camp since? No? Not yet? Yeah. Well, but you might be able to. You could, you could pen pal them, right? Or email or text or whatever else we do. You know, you could friend them on whatever social media you have. I'm getting old. I don't know all this stuff anymore. Um, but, it, it, you know, you guys can get on some cool stuff. And so you guys have those relationships, all right? And so I'm glad. And I'm glad that you guys have been here. You guys have been one of my favorite parts. And our relationship as friends, as pastor, it, I, I love it. So thank you guys so much for everything you've done for me, all right? All right. Well, let's pray. Okay, let's pray. Hey, God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for being with us while we're at camp, uh, while we're at home, while we're with our friends or our family. Continue to be with us, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I have some bulletins up here for you all. Eighteen hundreds hamburg. Was there anything different? Like, were they made of, like, rats or anything? No? Okay. That's good. Just regular cows. Okay, good. There you go, guys. Thanks for coming up. So we talked about this in Bible study, but you will see a very distinct thread through uh, many of our readings for uh, this Sunday. So our first lesson comes from Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, 
It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven, raining down manna upon them to eat and giving them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and powerfully let out the south wind, raining down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the seas, letting them fall in the midst of the camp, and round about the dwelling. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. Our second lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to leave, lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope for your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift, Therefore, it is said, when, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. These gifts he gave were that, that, were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. 
Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, guys, we made it, right? We made it. Um, it's it's uh, Sunday, it's worship, and it's a good day. Um, but this has been an absolutely crazy time for all of us. The last two years has been an absolutely crazy time. And I think that we've been able to experience different things through this. Like I talked about with the kids, um, and what you know, my professors talked about with me, was again, scripture is all about relationship. Scripture is all about relationship. It's about God's relationship with creation. God's relationship with humanity. Humanity's relationship with each other and then humanity's relationship with God. It's all about relationships. And so that's what I wanted to delve into a little bit today. Because that's what we hear in our gospel lesson. We hear Jesus coming to people to be in relationship with each other. And I think it's beautiful. You guys know my story. This past couple of years has been absolutely crazy. I've said to everyone, you know, this has been the most apocalyptic year of my life, you know, between having a new kid, between cancer, between the pandemic, between everything else. This has been a crazy, crazy time for all of us. But through it, I wanted to say thank you to this congregation for supporting me and my family throughout all of this. Throughout this time, this has been the hardest point in our lives. You know, I've said our, our family feels complete and strong, and yet we were in the hardest place that we had ever been. So I want to say thank you for being there for us. Thank you for supporting us through this, and thank you for helping us so that we can continue to do our ministry while we went through this. But I saw a whole bunch of different relationships through my time here. And you know what? I think a lot of times when we thought about pandemic, we thought, man, we can't do anything like we used to. We can't do anything the same. We have to wear masks. We have to social distance. We have to be away from each other or on Zoom. And yet God said, stuff is still going to happen. Our quilters continued to meet together and to do stuff. Our knitters continued to knit together. We started to do grab and go lunch. Again, the neat part about Grab and Go is evangelism has even got onto this. We have been doing some evangelism through Grab and Go Lunch. And again, providing food for people. When Jesus said, feed my sheep, it's not that he says, well, the church needs to feed everyone. But through that ministry, y'all have been feeding God's sheep. Y'all have been in relationship with people that are in desperate need. And people that are in desperate need of God's love as well. Pastor Courtney wishes she could be here today. She really does. Um, she's still not comfortable in crowds, and especially with this new variant stuff coming around. And I think that scares all of us a little bit, right? None of us want to go back to what it was like. And yet, as I look back and I say, I never want to relive this again. As I look back to it, I realize that it has helped me to realize that God is faithful. We stand here today, well, you all said I'm standing, but we're here today together. We made it through the first pandemic. Like, we made it. There were so many churches that had closed down, that had millions of dollars in the bank. There's churches that have closed down all across our territory, and we are still here. This, this body of Christ, this, this body of believers has made it through. Just like what Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians, it's about being in one spirit together. That we realize that we are all one body of Christ, and that no, individually we can't get through this by ourselves. Individually we can't get through cancer. Individually we can't get through pandemic. Individually we can't get through any of this stuff. The decline of the church. And yet, as the body of Christ, Christ says that he will never, never give up on his church. It says that Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the one leading us, and Christ is the one that is going to uphold us and strengthen us. 
When we hear about the bread of life, the bread of heaven, that's what we're going to get to take part in. We as the body of Christ gathered here this morning, get to feast on the body and blood of Christ, get to be strengthened and filled with the body and blood of Christ so that we can continue in this mission together. We have the bread of life supporting us. I think one of the saddest things that, I have, that we've all gone through over this pandemic also has to do with relationships. It has to do with those that have passed away during pandemic or before pandemic. And I think those were very difficult times for all of us because we weren't able to gather like we were supposed to, right? We weren't able to say goodbye the way that we were supposed to. And yet, again, God redeems. We are still able to celebrate their lives together. And again, when we go up to communion, we are there with them. Not only are we being supported, not only are we being strengthened, but we are also being joined with Christ himself. We are also being joined with all of those saints that have gone before us and will come after us. I am so thankful for this body of Christ. The different things that I've learned, the different ways that I've seen God work through this congregation. I'm excited to see what's going to happen as well. I desperately hope healing and wholeness can come back to this congregation. I hope that you guys can continue to grow, continue to do God's ministry here in East Petersburg. This is a great opportunity. We are the only Lutheran church in East Pete. You guys get to tell everybody in East Petersburg what grace is. You guys get to show East Petersburg who God is. You guys get to show East Petersburg what it means to be a, a Christian, part of the body of Christ. What you guys have been sent out to do, it's not a pastor that leads a congregation. It is the congregation that leads. It is the congregation that has been transformed. It is the congregation that has been claimed. Each individual one of you has been claimed by Christ. Each one of you has been claimed and God says, you are mine. God says, I'm going to feed you. I'm going to support you. And when you fall down, I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to carry you. Because we serve a God that again is here for us. That's here for the relationship with us that loves us and loves you more than you could ever know. And that's the God that we get to serve. That's the God that fills us. And that's the God that we get to represent here in East Petersburg. I told some people this, but it's impossible for a pastor not to love their congregation. It's impossible. You have people that you desperately love. And so I wanted to tell you all that I love you very much. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me and my family. And thank you for being the body of Christ here in East Petersburg. Amen.
Now let us join together in professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together, and restore the unity of the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You command the clouds above, the ca above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests. Defend species at risk of extinction and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing and accompany those who are imprisoned. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You receive all whom come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift up all those that we have on our prayer list. We pray for Gloria Ober, Don Cook, Tim Shorter, Brenda Rowland, Pastor Ben, Courtney, Alice, Ann, and Charlie. We lift up Ru Ruby Bollinger, Amy Brown, the family of Mary Chesters, Shirley Fink, the family of Joan Shuck, Tom and Dave Witter, Ken Hamill, and all those that we name aloud before you or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Also, let us share a greeting of peace with one another. Peace be with you, gentlemen. <clears throat> you may be seated.
Thank you for that offertory anthem, Jim. Um, just This is going to be a plea. So you guys know Bob, who um, you guys had gotten a car for. He is incredibly happy uh, with his vehicle. But he had another question for me. He, he wanted to know if anybody had a VCR player with a controller. I said, I do not have one, but I will ask people. So if you have one, talk to me. Let me know. Bob needs one for um, his, his VCRs. But again, um, God continues to multiply our gifts that we offer. So if you please rise. And let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Oh, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are the most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it to remember me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and you, with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receive the forgiveness of sin, may be, forg may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all of your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be our glory and honor in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, just as a reminder, that they will ex excuse you from the middle aisle, you will come up, receive, and then go back to your seat and consume. But taste and see that the Lord is good.
If you please rise. And now may the holy body and the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. O God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more we will, we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Before we say goodbye to Pastor, there's one other person we need to thank who is leaving, or not leaving our family, but um, Vicki Swintech has been our church secretary for the last four years. And Vicki, I know you're at home watching. Thank you so much for your service. Please, as you guys see Vicki, um, make sure you thank her. We've really, she's really helped us out. Um, thank you, Vicki. Okay. Vicki is still a member. We will see her coming in, doing her grab and go. Um, she's just not our secretary anymore. But we also want to say a big thank you to Pastor. Um, it's been a crazy two years, like you said, and we appreciate you walking alongside of us through this pandemic and the craziness of everything. So thank you so much. Um, <laughs> And after worship, please join us downstairs in the fellowship hall. We have just a, a little social, some fellowship, and some snacks, too. So, thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Well, thank you all very much. And again, um, this has always been my favorite aspect of the liturgy, is the sending. Because you guys have been filled, you guys have been strengthened, and now it's your turn to go out. So hear now this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.